Welcome to GV247.TV, the Global Vision Channel. A non-profit web TV channel bringing biblical perspective to the world in which you live. Hello and welcome. Thank you as always for joining us. Now, if you don't know who we are and what we do, why not click on episode 16, which is last week's one, which is part one of this two-part series, which is the anatomy of deception. It's something that's quite unique. Now, it's actually part of an overall series on spiritual deception, and it's showing the need for great discernment as we need to be aware of unsound doctrines and practices that have train-wrecked lives around the world. So this week we continue our investigation of the so-called June the 9th prophecy, which was televised by Christian networks and promoted at conferences such as the one we filmed in Dallas, Texas, 12 days before the prophesied event was due to occur. So you really do need to watch the last episode to get, to, to get it all from the beginning. First of all, let's look at our updates. So once again, a really big thank you to all those of you who have subscribed. Now that's the big yellow button underneath here. Um, we really do appreciate those who take time to write in, tell us what you think of Global Vision TV, GV247, and the weekend show. Now at present we're working on other sections for the channel. Remember we've got 22 channels on this network uh, covering all different subjects from a biblical perspective. So we'll look forward to your emails suggesting how else we can best serve the body of Christ. Keep it polite. So please do share the channel with others and if you've contacted us and you've not had a reply check your spam folder yeah. because you know we're not a faceless organization and we really do take time to answer all emails. Now, if you've joined the Global TV family, be sure you've received the September newsletter because it's got lots of information in it, including how you can represent Global Vision TV at gv247.tv in your country. Stuart. Well, as I mentioned last week, the coming weekly programmes are founded in the Lamplight Project. And the Lamplight Project is all about training and discipleship, building up the church to be a faithful witness and to persevere. For those new to GB247, and we have many people uh, joining every week from around the world, we have asked the questions, why do we believe what we believe? And why would we put our trust in the Bible? So we produced another DVD, Does My Life Have Meaning? And those and many other kinds of questions regarding uh, origins and the trustworthiness of the Bible are dealt with by leading experts, a powerful outreach tool. Yeah. So to recap um, on last week's program, yep. mm -hmm. and if you didn't see that, please do watch last week's so you have the full context of what this is all about. Here's a short clip from that convention in Dallas, Texas, where an astonishing proclamation was delivered to Christian believers. Now I'm sharing this with you this morning because it's necessary for you to listen carefully to get ready for June the 9th. Now, for those of you who were not here last night, God sent me especially with this message. And when he gave me, woke me up in the night over a year ago, he said on, this was a voice clearer than any trumpet blast. It was just tremendous in volume. I've never heard anything like it. But only God could speak that loud without hurting you. But it went outside, inside, and all through me. I was amazed that it didn't wake Bonnie up right next to me, but it didn't. And the voice said, on Thursday, June the 9th, I will rip the evil out of this world. And praise God. As you sit here tonight, do you realize that you've got less than two weeks? You know, that really does bring back so many memories. I think we've really only been believers for just a few years ourselves. Yeah. 
we were working on the documentary Cup of Trembling, which we talk about in episode whatever, three, four, something like that. And there just seemed to be so much happening. Uh, it really was an adventure. It was an adventure for us going to ta Texas. Everything really is bigger there, including deception. So to be confronted by what was a shocking message when there was apparently only 12 days left before this astonishing event was about to shake the yeah. world. I mean, it was really yeah. unnerving, yeah. wasn't it? Now, we were filming on a, a hidden gantry at the back of a hall mm -hmm. and uh, we looked down upon the, the, uh, the proceedings. Mm -hmm. And that night, when we retired to our, our hotel room, mm -hmm. uh, we just stared at one yeah. another because... Yeah. We were in stunned silence. We just couldn't figure out what on earth mm. was going on. What yeah. was that all about that we had just been a part of filming? Mm. There had been many scriptures alluded to mm -hmm. and uh, one or two that formed the main thrust of the message. But in every case where an eschatological scripture had been given, mm. it, it, it was clearly taken out of context. Yeah, it was. It was spiritualized to suit the message, turned into something unrecognizable in regard to any kind of systematic hermeneutic or sound doctrine. Yeah. But it wasn't just that. It was mm -hmm. the fact that so many people were going along with this mm -hmm. that made it unnerving and confusing. It was a real lesson in holding fast to what you know in sound scripture. Yeah regardless of what everybody else was doing. In other words, do you fear God and his clearly revealed word, mm -hmm. which cannot change, or do you just go along with the crowd because you don't want to be left on the outside? Mm -hmm. And it was interesting because really in the year or so preceding that, the Lord really had just started to call us into this ministry. Mm -hmm. And, and I have to say, it really was, Stuart, you know, was recognising the scriptures first. So just as a reminder, as we said last week, the purpose for the following programmes on deception is to help every true follower of Jesus Christ to carefully yeah. investigate anything and everything that claims to be from the God yeah. of the Bible. Um, I'd also like to recommend the Sound the Alarm DVD series, which demonstrates examples of why many of these false practices are false and showing why they're wrong. Um, and you can order them from BethelCommunications.tv. And once again, let me remind you, in regard to the pastor in the video clips, it's not about the individual. Mm -hmm. It's about the message. Mm -hmm. People come and go, but deception is a continual occurrence. Yeah. As far as we can ascertain, this pastor was a long-serving minister. He promoted unity and exhorted believers to be upright in behaviour. So what did June the 9th mean for Christians and the world? Here's the clip. Praise God for June the 9th. You will see it. You will see it. Let me ask you, when we talk about heaven, you can't imagine anything imperfect there, can you? No, it's all beautiful, isn't it? Streets of gold, oh, how we describe it. Revelation describes it. John describes it. Jesus lived it. And where did he live it? On earth. So here is the point right now. Get ready for June the 9th. And this is one of the points. Friends, don't judge anybody. Stay away from it. And above everything else, forgive everyone everything that they've ever done in your life or that you've done to somebody else. Get on your knees and ask the Lord to take it off. You remember when the scales fell from the eyes of Paul after his Damascus experience? Are you ready for yours? Yeah. All right. I say that again. You heard it, Lord. And you're going to have it. You're going to have it. Why is this happening? Oh, this, this is beautiful. Because you see, we're going to see Jesus as he truly is. Now, 
What does Paul say about this? Because the day you see him as he really is, you will be like him. That's scriptural. Now, how do you get ready for this coming event? Hundreds and hundreds of phone calls and letters are coming in about this. Before you leave this convention, <clears throat> excuse me, dedicate yourself anew. Dedicate yourself anew, totally. Give your heart, your soul, your life, and your body to the Holy Spirit to prepare you for the new wine. <laughs> Don't fear what's coming. Oh, yes. You'll be awed by it. But hold on to his hand. Amen. Again, for those who were not here last night, let me repeat. Write down Revelation 3.10. I will protect you from the hour of trial that's coming on the whole world. God is drawing you right into his heart. Amen. That's what he sent me here to tell you. That you're entering a whole new world. What the world has been will be nothing compared to where you're going. God is drawing you right into his heart. So we see once again the reference from last week in regard to heaven coming to earth. Now this is a falsehood that's currently being promoted in many churches around the world now, claiming everything is going to be beautiful. And Satan loves this lie being promoted because if heaven's already come to earth, nobody's going to be looking for Jesus coming again. Now, of course, any scripture reference to the Lord's return speaks categorically of devastation and global upheaval. Yeah. Yet he has already said, it's not the second coming. In regard to a new heaven and earth, we note from Scripture that the one we're in just now, and that includes the cosmos, mm. needs to be completely consumed by fire to make way for the new. Yeah, that's right. So he's now won the hearts of most of the audience, as you can see. Now, for others, there is clearly confusion over what he's talking about. So he throws in a sobering Scripture in regard to getting ready for June the 9th by making sure you're not judging anyone and that you're holding no record of wrongs. And I think particularly... It's clever, isn't it? You're not judging him. Yeah, yeah. And, and th there's, an underplay, there's an underplay of that. Now, I remember we were told, Stuart, that there were about 4,000 at the convention. You think it, it looks a lot less than yeah, that. But me. there were many, many hundreds of people. And this is, uh, uh, shivers are just going through me because it was astonishing how they were taking this message on board. So again, this analysis is showing you how to recognize some of these, the, the, the symptoms as it were, of when a false prophecy is going out. Now, not judging anyone is mm. good solid advice from the Bible, yep. but it does not validate his prophetic message. In the same way, uh, the story of Paul's conversion was about a God-fearing Jew who was given insight into his Messiah and who would go on to undergo many dangerous trials that would lead to him giving his life for the sake of the gospel. Mm -hmm. In fact, we are to be found worthy of sharing in the Lord's sufferings. But according to this prophet that we've been watching, on June the 9th, he says, we will see Jesus as he really is and we will be like him. So, once again, the actual scriptural reference doesn't line up with his June the 9th cleansing prophecy. Taken from 1 John 3, 2, mm -hmm. the text says that when Christ appears, we will be like him. Mm -hmm. Paul explains in both 1 Corinthians 15, 52, we are changed and given new bodies and clothed with the immortal. When in 1 Thessalonians mm -hmm. 4.16, we are caught up or mm -hmm. resurrected yeah. to be with the Lord. But once again, the pastor claims that this event is neither the rapture or the second coming, but a cleansing. Yet he uses scriptures that do not support his prophecy. Mm -hmm. I mean, we just don't see 
a worldwide cleansing in the Bible, not in this way that he is speaking about. So mm. how does he say to get ready for the event? So we have to give our heart and soul to the Holy Spirit for the new wine. Please watch the DVDs that you can get from BethelCommunications.tv and you'll understand this is absolutely dangerous. You're inviting in other spirits. And he tells us, don't fear what's coming. This is literally diabolical. Again, we're not saying the man is. It is the whole message behind it. Now, in the years following this convention, Stuart and I would go to film many events that would take up this theme. And while there are those who claim that God met with them in a meaningful and positive way, we also witnessed a, a real train wreck of individuals, you know, broken marriages, confusion, people falling away from the faith, foolishness and ungodly acts that bring the church mm. into disrepute. And yes, in fact, we really do. We have, we have many, many tapes, don't we? We have many mm. videos. Um, we've held meetings with church leaders from around the world about this growing deception just as jesus prophesied yeah yeah in regard to the mention of revelation three ten, once again an eschatological scripture that makes no sense in regard to this june the 9th prophecy we are told you will be entering a whole new world on june the 9th once again, scripture is clear that this world and the cosmos would need to be burned up before it will be replaced. Yeah. So what else is meant to happen? Well, we are find out in 12 days time, apparently... People keep saying to me, what's going to happen on June the 9th? And they talk about earthquakes, they talk about all of this, and there's many prophets now shouting, look out for this and that and the plagues and the other things. Friends, the greatest thing, and there will be things to meet outside, yes. But if you know Jesus, you don't have to worry about it. Yeah. If you belong to him, he'll take you right through it. Yeah. Right? Amen. Many, many people have written letters to me and said they've asked God, what's going to happen? Could you tell me? You know what they got for an answer? Now I put it my word, but every one of these letters has the same answer from God. It's so big, your human mind cannot even conceive of it. <laughs> and it's scriptural, that's true. The Lord said, I'm going to do something, it's in Isaiah, a brand new thing. Because if a man could think of it, he'd borrow it and sell it. Just as sure. And he said, I'm going to do it in such a way. And listen, I love this. That no man can take any credit for it. And you will be a part of God's kingdom and power such as you have never even dreamed of. This just gets better and better. You ready for more? On that day, around the world, all flesh will see and know the power of God's love, His mercy, His reaching out, that great loving heart, and millions and millions of people are coming to Christ. People say, well, what's it going to be like? I don't know. But I can tell you this. Get your heart ready. I believe that on that day, every believer is going to be totally healed. You say, I love Jesus Christ, don't you? You love the Holy Spirit, don't you? And Jesus lifted his hand to the multitudes and what? He healed them all. Is it going to be anything less? No. I believe we're going to see limbs restored that have been taken away in surgery. 
or lost. I believe hip joints that have had steel plates in there are going to be totally replaced in the Lord. I believe it, yes, praise God. I know because God is moving in such a mighty way to confirm His Word. Why should this be unusual when the Lord said, I am the Lord your God. I am your God. Well, it's really astonishing, isn't it? It all sounds rather perfect. This man is very serious. We will all be healed, he says. There'll be no more crying. God's mm. love is everywhere and millions will come to Christ. Now, I'll just remind you, it's in 1994 he gave this prophecy and said this was going to happen on June the 9th. So uh, we might just as well throw the Bible away, to be quite honest, because June yeah. the 9th sounds amazing, unbelievably amazing. We don't have time to go through all the scriptures cited, but a sound reading of the text reveals that this prophecy is unfounded. It really is. Every tear will be wiped dry? Yes, when we meet the Lord face to face mm -hmm. and not before. Jesus made it clear you live in a world and you will find you will have trouble. Yeah. In fact, didn't he say that we'll find trouble in this world? I mean, this is it. We'll find trouble, he says. <laughs> sorry, Stuart. <laughs> I'm sorry. You know, it was all these years ago and Stuart and I are still, we're still astonished that this happened. You got another clip? Yeah, here's a clip uh, where he reads from Thessalonians. And to, verse 7, and to grant rest with us to you who are afflicted when the Lord Jesus is, here's this word, revealed from heaven. Revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire inflicting vengeance upon those who do not know God or the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. They shall suffer the punishment of eternal destruction. And I want to come back to that. I've been asked that question again and again. I'll be back in just a moment. But now go down to verse 10. So, reading 2 Thessalonians 1, chapter 1, 5 to 10, he appears to realise that the scripture is going to cause him problems. So he skips forward to encourage everyone about God's love and how wonderful everything will be. Of course, the text is once again eschatological and refers to Christ's visual return and a day of judgment. But he continues to alter the scripture. He returns to the text to try and explain himself. Here we are. Here. Um, oh, and they will suffer the punishment, those who are taken out. <clears throat> I'm asked again and again, what about my loved ones that I'm praying for that are not saved? What about others? We. What about these, that, and the other? All right, listen carefully. The God I know and serve, my blessed Jesus, is so loving and so kind that no one will be ripped out and thrown into the furnace of fire until first he sees the full love, the full glory that God has for him, and then he can make his choice. Everyone, no matter where they are, the scripture says you and your household will be saved, doesn't it? My Jesus, my God. Mm -hmm. Well, it would appear that his God changes his mind. Scripture is clear. All have fallen short. All need saved. But most will follow the white path to destruction, while few will find the narrow path to life. Mm -hmm. He misappropriated the text from Exodus regarding a lamb for a household during the time of Passover and the angel of death. In the New Testament, Jesus makes it clear that tragically the gospel will bring division in families. And that's why we need to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. 
The job of the disciple of Christ is to give a clear account of the full gospel, which says, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Mm. Throughout the meetings, the message was interspersed with apparent healings. And here we have some clips. There's a woman here named Sandra. Your prayers have been answered according to your faith. Be it done unto you. Praise God. I hope everybody with arthritis here this morning are, are just letting go to let the power of spirit just set their wrists, their knees, their legs. It's coming free right now. Oh, praise God. There's some neck healing that have just taken place. There's another. Praise God. There's a heart condition that's been healed. Oh, dear Jesus, thank you for your spirit of healing. It's just pouring over this group right now. Totally. I praise God for those. There's at least three or four backs. This must be a night for back healing. There's a, a lump in somebody's breast. You've been concerned about it. You've been to the doctor. But you're not going to have an operation. And you go back and you ask for another examination. There's at least three people here tonight that you have come to specifically and you feel nobody loves you and you've been thinking about suicide. We do not speak irreverently in regard to the genuine touch of God on individuals' lives. We have known it ourselves in wonderful ways. Yeah. But it was quite unsettling yeah. to be in a place where many hundreds upon hundreds of people soaked up what was clearly false doctrine mm. and false prophecy leading to false hopes. Yeah. Of course, nothing happened on June the 9th. They were saying it happened in the spirit, didn't yeah. they? In other words, let's sweep this invisible delusion under a carpet. Yeah. And as for all the wonderful things that were meant to happen visually before mm. our eyes and feel in our bodies, well, clearly the reality is yeah. we have seen the opposite. Mm -hmm. A few years later, we would see the attack on the Twin Towers, conflict in the Middle East, which would snowball into the Arab Spring, terrorism, which would reach new heights, yeah. atomic warfare threatens the Far East, ecological disasters across the globe have seen the death of millions. Mm. The list goes on and on and on. But here's the real prophecy. This is precisely what the Bible warns. So over the next couple of weeks, we will take a deeper look at warnings to the church. And we're going to look at 10 false teachings and nine spiritual deceptions that every true Christian believer should be aware of. Now remember, Jesus continually warns, do not be deceived, for even the elect would be deceived if that were possible. Yeah. So let's finish on a scripture to spur us all on. The Lord's favour is on those who are humble, contrite and who fear God's word. And you'll find that in Isaiah 66 too. That's us until next week. Now remember, please get in touch. Please do subscribe. Take a look around the other 22 channels we have here on gv247.tv. And... And remember, we have these cards and if you would like... If you like a, a box of these, write in and tell us. They're great for handing out to people. Uh, we have also A5 leaflets as well, if you mm -hmm. want to take them to your local church. Let people, Just contact us. Yeah, let people know. We're here, free, no charge to you. God bless. See you next week. This is gv247.tv a non-profit web TV channel bringing biblical perspective to the world in which you live. A powerful free resource with hundreds of short films on a wide range of Bible topics from experts around the world, plus full-length sermons and programs for teaching and encouragement. Choose from current affairs, signs of the times, a chance to voice your own opinion, and special offers on our full-length feature films, documentaries, and study materials. At over four hours in length, 
The Lamplight Project is a systematic 12-part Bible study series, a powerful teaching tool that begins with the origins of life and takes the viewer on a comprehensive journey packed with high-profile interviews, film, graphics and illustrations, concluding with the return of Christ and an encouragement to stand firm and be faithful. Complete with a free study guide download for both personal and group study, this powerful interactive guide connects to over a thousand programs with expert interviews on GV247.tv, our free service web TV channel. Does My Life Have Meaning? A powerful one-hour presentation produced from the Lamplight Project. With a free copy of the Gospel of Luke, this film is crammed with engaging interviews, film and graphics. A life-challenging film to those searching for answers. As distributors for the Jesus film, we offer this timeless movie based on Luke's Gospel. This clear presentation of the life of Jesus Christ has been viewed worldwide and translated into over 1,200 languages. We provide the film with a free copy of the Gospel of Luke. The Daniel Project is a popular TV documentary that presents an overview of Bible prophecy and an encouragement to read the signs of the times. Hailed as one of the best TV films to be made on the subject, DVD extras feature a heart-to-heart -heart interview about the way of rescue. We've been serving the body of Christ for over 30 years, and if you would like further information, please do not hesitate to get in touch.